Welcome, gentlemen, and thank you for tuning to the conversation with Pastor Strike. Just want to welcome you all and appreciate you for tuning in. Last week we started this program where I invited you so that we can be together on the conversation, men to men. And I thank you so very much for all the comments that you've sent me and uh, the suggestions that you've given me. And I therefore would love to say, welcome gentlemen, welcome our sons, welcome friends, and thank you so very much for all your thoughts, for all your advices, for all your, the ideas that you are, you are putting forward. And I would love for us, and because most of what I got is um, appreciations, and thank you so very much. And from now going forward, let us really get down the conversation and let us really uh, get down the debate and let us talk, uh, talk this thing out. Because like I said, as men, you know, in times like this, in times of crisis, uh, a lot is demanded from us. Leadership is demanded from us in our families, in our communities, even in our workplaces, and even in a nation, in the nation as a whole. So friends, like I said last week that um, there's no school where we are taught to be men. There's no school where we are trained to be fathers. There's no school where we are trained of all these things which are very important. And I trust that through the conversation, we together can sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron. You know something, I know something. We put it together, we make it work. Because friends, I must be honest. Unless we do something, things are getting worse and things are getting out of hand. Remember the scripture all. Just to recap a little bit, last week we proved to each other through the scriptures that uh, male and female were created by God the same day. But man was the first to be released. You know, we are the first, uh, we are the first to be released. We are the first version of man or humanity for a very clear reason that God wanted us to be the foundation of the human race. God wanted us to be first for a very important reason. That is why he gave us work to do. And one very important thing that uh, I must bring to us is that uh, the idea of a woman did not come from us. We were not complaining. There was nothing wrong with us. We were just fine. You know, the reason we're just fine is because there was no void in us. There was no vacuum in us. Because God had filled that vacuum. God had filled our hearts. With this intimacy in a relationship with God. So intimate relationship to an extent that Every time we sit with God, we will then bring out exactly what God will bring out. That is why it was easy for Adam to name all the animals. It was easy for Adam to cultivate the garden, to bring the best out of the garden, to release the garden's fullest potential because he had a relationship with God. And then God said, with this relationship that man has with me and with all what I have given him and how he obeys, now it's not good for him to be alone. Let me now take out the woman. The woman was not an afterthought. She was there in the plan of God from the beginning. But God wanted us to stand out first for a, another very good reason. So that you and I as men can be able to carry Father God's title, the title Father, because whatever comes of, out of you, you father it. So that is why when Eve was to come into the picture, God never went back to the ground to form her out of the dust. No, God went into a man, a male man, and took Eve out. So because she came from us, then she becomes our child, you know? We father here. We become the fathers because whatever comes out of you, you father it. 
remember about organizations you know we talk of founding fathers like i said last week we have got even found founding fathers of our nations as africa those men uh, that really led our nations to, to 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 freedom you know we call them founding fathers so even organizations they are founding fathers of organizations so god made our, sure that we become the first version of human beings so that we become the foundation so that we become the fathers you see that so a woman comes out of a man so you father a woman but we father according to how god fathers because god fathers through protection he fathers through love he fathers through providing he fathers through caring that is why he says to adam cultivate the garden keep it that is bring out the best that out of the garden and make it fruitful make it blossom and again keep it protect it so he was training adam to be a father and then when adam qualified to be a father then god said now is the time let me release from you a woman and when eve was released when eve was released as the second version you know what then we become the father of the human race but god was so good in that in the process he made sure that uh, there's interdependence a woman came out of a man but god then said a man must come out of a woman and this says to you and i that there's none of us who's an afterthought there's none of us who's a subhuman there's none of us who's inferior of the other but our roles our responsibilities are different that's the only thing that makes the difference so that is why i call you my dear friends i call you a father you are the father you are the foundation you are the progenitor you are the foundation of the human race that is why as goes men so goes the nation as goes men so goes the family we are the one who determine the dna of the family who determine the dna of a community the dna of a nation the nation or the community is as good as its men if the community has good men i'm telling you it becomes a great community if the community has bad men that community becomes a very bad community that is who we are that's who god made us to be and when i say let us in, let us engage on the conversation it's about these issues friends so that we, we we get to understand even to see where things went wrong and begin to correct it the reason things are not as they were in the beginning is because sin entered and when sin entered into the picture sin displaced men and listen to this friends did you know that the kingdom takes the character of the king you know the kingdom takes the character of the king now the world today takes the character of the father and who is that father that is a man even a family it takes the character of you dad of you you know that's why your children they take after you you may not admit it because sometimes when you see some of the bad and the weird things that they do you get so crazy about it but i can tell you they take it from you i can give you just a simple practical example in the early 80s i had dreadlocks and uh, when i by the time i got married i had no dreadlocks yes i had some afro and things like that but guess what when my children were born i did not have the afros and the like my hair was a little bit short but my children all my children they went for dreadlocks and afro you know and i thought to myself they did not know they never saw it but you know what they got it from their father so sometimes we get lost to ourselves we wonder you look at your son you say what is this then let me tell you that that is exactly you and when we talk of being a father you fathering your children but you also fathering your family for your family to work out 
The character, because that is your kingdom, your family is your kingdom. The character of your kingdom, or the characteristics of the kingdom, is determined by your character as the king of your own family. That is why I always tell ladies, never call your husband baby. It's not romantic, it's not swag, it's an insult. You are not a baby, friend. Don't even feel good when your wife calls you baby. You are not a baby. You are a daddy. She is the one who is the baby. She came out of you. When we talk of the sequence of events, she is the one who came from you. And that, that is why you have to father her. That is why many a time, when ladies call men baby, that's why guys, we end up becoming or acting like babies, become irresponsible, mess up big time. But you are daddy, and she is baby, because she came out of us. It's not us who came out of women, but women came out of us, and then God balanced the whole equation, and then now we are born of women. But it is very much important for us to understand our right, rightful place as men. That is why last week I spoke of this scripture in Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 15, very important scripture, which says, So God took men, the men that he had made, according to the Amplified, and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. To cultivate and keep it. That is very much important for us to understand. Like I said, to cultivate is to make fruitful. It is to bring the best out of whatever is before you. And it is also to bring uh, out the fullest potential of a thing or of a person. So, because of that, we realize that you and I, we have this responsibility to bring out the best of our children. Starting with your wife. To bring out the best out of her. To bring out the best out of her. And as you bring out the best out of her, make her a great woman. It's a shame, my friend, if you are afraid to help and to expose your wife and let her grow and let her develop. And you know what? I'm saying this knowing very well that there are men that are looking at me and say, strike you mad. You don't know what you're talking about. I got this girl. She was, she didn't even have metric. I took her to school. She got a degree, she got this, she got that, and now she left me. Yes, that happens, and we'll talk about it. But you know what? Don't erase the good that you have done. <laughs> you have cultivated her, you brought the best out of her. It's only that. It is not only one thing that builds a family. There's quite a lot of things. And sometimes, unfortunately, more especially when you have invested in developing and helping your partner, sometimes we feel they owe us. And sometimes we, it's easy for us to tell them, I found you, and because of that, sometimes we delegate or we, uh, we, we, we sort of become irresponsible. We, 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 we throw away our responsibility. And because of that, we get into disaster. Because I must be honest, the reason marriages are not working is not because you married a very wicked woman or because you are a very wicked and a very bad man. No, the truth is that, let's face it, the truth is that you don't know. You didn't even know what you were getting yourself into. I know. I got into marriage, man. I was just experimenting. I didn't know what I was getting into. Reason being that we are never taught. You know, we're never taught. These are the things that we don't talk about. And we cannot keep on blaming our parents. But at the very same time, one other thing that I found to be contributing seriously to the anger and the bitterness and the lack of cultivating and the lack of care that man portrays at a, 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 most of the time is because most of us, we never experience the love of our fathers. You see, Adam could cultivate because he was secured by the love of the father. He knew his father loved him. Father God loved him. And you know, it's very much important for you as a son to know that daddy loves me. 
Daddy approves me. Daddy believes in me. Very much important. So some of us, we grew up, all we heard from our fathers that when daddy comes home, you must run. When daddy comes home, he asks you to home take with don't take with you know, it's 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 really trouble. We have never had relationships with our fathers. So when we talk of a father, we talk of somebody who when he steps in, or, or sometimes we know father just because father gets the biggest meat in the in the house. You know? So we don't know. We were not trained. Not to mention when we come to our traditional and, 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 and schools that we have, uh, initiation schools, both for ladies and for gents. I don't want to get into that because I don't want to uh, unravel things. But one thing for sure, that was maybe a platform where we were supposed to be taught how to be men, how to be women for ladies. But you know what? If you are a Tonga, what you have to do just think of that that shows you that that did not really come home so we really don't know some of young men and men and fathers that are fathers today and grandfathers you didn't even know your father you grew up it was so bad it was so harsh you had to you had to you know you had to struggle you had to suffer you have to put on the same pair of pants Going to school every day. Because daddy was not there. You are with mommy trying to survive here and there. And you are so bitter. That is why most of the violence that we see in men today. And in boys today. Is not violence against. It's not gender based violence. It's self hate. Some men and some young men are so angry about. Angry to their fathers. Angry about a man. Some they even tell you, if I meet that man, I will kill him. And unfortunately, you cannot harbor anger and control it. Once it's anger, anger controls. Anger controls you. And it builds you. And the next thing, while you are angry with your father, now you will be angry with your mother. Now you will be angry with your wife. Now you will be angry with everybody else. There are some people, they are just angry. Very angry. Why? Because... There are issues that are not resolved in their lives. Yes, there are some who suffered the same, but they chose to learn out of that. Like I spoke a message saying, riding on the wings of your afflictions, making sure that you make the best use of your experience, no matter how harsh it is. Some people, they chose to learn. That's why they've become good fathers. But some, unfortunately, they became uh, um, victims of pain, victims of anger, victims of bitterness. And because of that, you are so violent. And my friend, you need help. That is why when we talk about the conversation, men to men, I'm saying let's help each other, guys. Let's help each other. Otherwise, we get messed up. I'm telling you, otherwise you destroy things. You know, you build things with all your might, with all your strength, and the next thing you see, you see it fall apart. Haven't you seen, guys, who will work themselves out? Who will build big stuff? And guess what? There's a friend of mine I don't want to talk about. A very powerful businessman who died a very, a very lonely death. Dying alone in the house. Why? Because you know what? Sometimes we, be, we become so big and so dynamic. And build organizations. Build bigness, businesses. But fail to build the family. You know how, why we can build businesses and all those things and, and succeed, but not succeed when it comes to family? It's because, you know, with businesses, men, we research, men, we study, men, we, the, the, there are things that we put together, but how many times have you invested to deal with yourself, to know yourself, to develop yourself, not develop yourself as for career-wise, but develop yourself as a man, develop yourself as a husband, develop yourself as, as a father. You know what? When I when I when my eyes got opened about these uh, matters, I realized that, you know what? Lord, I thank you for your mercies. Lord, I thank you for your grace. Because you realize that uh, as fathers sometimes, we leave our children to grow like snakes. You know snakes, they don't, they don't take care of their children. 
but we expect our children to bring out the best to do the best and the only time we can talk to them is when we reprimand them is when we fight them is when we tell them and we tell them boy i will kill you girl i will kill you how many times you'll remember this some of you guys you remember how your sister was chased away from home just because she got pregnant and remember daddy's words daddy said to mommy we expect say, our sisters or we expect our daughters to behave but we don't say anything we expect them to be angels but we never tell them about the realities of life and they go out there and they are proposed and they, they never heard anything from daddy they, never, they were never told by daddy that I love you, my daughter. They were never taken to a restaurant by their own fathers. And when somebody says, I love you, then they melt. And we get mad. That's why I say, gentlemen, let's get down the conversation. Let us talk. Let us sharpen each other. I'm a father, I'm a grandfather today. I've not passed the fathering in flying colors. I look back, I see my flaws, I see my mistakes, and I realize that, you know what, some of these things I can share with others. I remember one of my brothers, he might be watching now, who said, Pastor, if I had an opportunity to listen to the message that you shared on rising, riding on the wings of your afflictions, I would, be, I would not have done what I've done. Why? Because he took a decision, he took a permanent decision to solve a temporary problem. And I said to him, man, thank you. I applaud you and appreciate you for opening up and talk to another man. Because if there be one thing that we must learn and learn to do as men is let us talk. Gentlemen, let us talk. You know what? I put on a suit. I told myself I'll put on a suit when I sit in this program. Why? Just to respect you. Just to say, guys, I respect you. Boys, I respect you. Gentlemen, I res fathers, I respect you. I do this just to respect you. But at the very same time to say, you know what, these things, they've got a way of covering a lot of rottenness in us. They've got a way of covering our weakness, our failures. You look good, you look a gentleman, and you walk tall, but men, deep inside you are broken, you are shattered, you are finished. And I'm saying, you cannot die like that. How many of our brothers blew their brains, blew the brains of their little children, blew the brains of their wives because of a problem that could be solved? And I'm saying, let's get down the conversation, friends. Let us talk. I just want to talk or to read a scripture, just one scripture, and we will continue from it, um, of this gentleman, Nehemiah. And this gentleman is in, um, it's found in the, uh, Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. It reads, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hekaliah, it came to pass in the month of Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hanan, one of the brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped and survived captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The survivors who are left from captivity in the province are there in, sorry, in the province, are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Friends, this guy, he hears about the situation of his community. He does something that I want to encourage us to learn to do, to learn from him and to do it. And I'm saying to us, friends, if you and I, do not bring a stop to the madness, to the rottenness, to the abuse, to the killing, to the violence. What kind of a world are we living for our children and our grandchildren? Friends, this is the conversation with Pastor Strike. Remember, share this with other men. And please, let us get talking. The numbers are on the screen. And I invite you, please, let's communicate. Let's talk and get something going. I thank you for watching. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. I believe in you. Please believe in me. 
and let us get the conversation going. Thank you so very much and God bless you.